Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bet99's The Parlay Show. It is Canada's sports betting show, and I am Rob Conway. Joining me is my co-host, as always, Albert Vartanian. Yes, sir. Albert, how are you doing, my man? I'm good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. Weather is is great here in Toronto. It's the summer. It's well, not... Ah, uh, great-ish. Well, it's supposed to rain today rain. in particular. Buddy, the thunder, was it yesterday during the day? It's like right above the house. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Big I thunderstorm. Li- I had the lights flicker a little bit yesterday at my house, too. It was... It, but look, it's summer. It's a little slower when it comes to the sports calendar, but we always have stuff to talk about, and we have stuff to talk about today, of course. Going on. Uh, Major League Baseball, we'll get into the Jays. Sean McCormick will jo- join us for the second half of the show. Matthew Barterby, regular co-host on the show, is traveling. Thank you to Air Canada and a couple delays. He is not able to join us today on the show, <laughs> yeah. heading to Saskatoon. But we have a new little parlay, parlay coming up later. So he does have his pick okay, um, I like that. that we will have um, a little bit later on in the show. But yeah, the NHL awards were on last night. We just had the NBA draft. Um, lots of things going on. So we're going to get through a whole bunch of stuff on the show. But uh, NHL awards, like I said, were last night. Did you watch did, them? Did I? I did not. Yeah. I, honest- I did. I tuned in here and there. There's a couple of clips that were popping up online. Yeah. Kind of knew pretty much who was going to win everything. You know, Allmark was going to get the Vesna. You knew yeah. McDavid was going to get the Hart. You knew uh, Montgomery was going to get the Jack Adams. So you knew what was going to happen. I just wanted to see how the personalities were interacting. And, man, wasn't great. No. I don't know if you saw that little interaction between Connor McDavid and Knox, the no. host's son. You didn't yeah. see that? You got to see it. Yeah. It was it was so awkward. It was I can't even watch it. You know when something's it's so awkward and embarrassing that it, it hurts you, you want to turn away? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what happened with Connor McDavid last night. And I kind of feel bad. I don't want to make fun of the guy. No, But no. I just don't think they prepared him for it. Yeah, they don't prepare him. And, and it's also just, you know, just because you're good at hockey doesn't mean you have a big, giant personality. That, that's a good right? point, too. So, like, it, it is what it is. Um, did you see the voting for the heart? Yeah, someone... Uh, Gave him a fifth place vote. Someone gave David Pasternak the first place yeah. vote, which is not okay, but okay. But why is it anonymous? That's what I want to know. I didn't think it was anonymous, but it's not in. Uh... It shouldn't be. Oh, you know what? It's I not think... in the NBA. Not in the NBA. In the Hall of Fame voting, you can in baseball, you can pick if you want to be anonymous or not. A lot of people don't. They, right. they want people to know what they vote for because it you know gets clicks. And so stuff. it should be. It should be. Yeah. How can you put Connor McDavid fifth? Who knows? Maybe he just wanted to do it. Or she, whoever wanted to do it. By the way, you want to hear the biggest bonehead move? So yesterday, I'm on the book, and I'm yeah. looking at uh, NHL award odds, right? Okay. And I'm like, Connor McDavid, plus 125 to win the heart. I'm like, am I missing something here? <laughs> yes, you are. I'm like, who else is going to win this thing? I'm like, <laughs> Kachuk, no. Carlson, like, no, no one's going to win the heart. Mm-hmm. So obviously I hammer it, yeah. and I message the guys, like some of the production guys. Yeah. I'm like, guys, plus one, you guys got to get in on this. It's five seconds later. Uh, never mind. That's for 2024. <laughs> Which so is now, still decent. So now I got a Connor McDavid future at a plus 125 to win the heart. Man, I Which I'm not even that happy about. Well, no, the odds wise, that's that's it's if he plays 82 games, then it's a steal. Matthews is behind him like plus three or plus four. And I'm like, <sighs> it, it, well, it's a good question. If McDavid plays 82 games, do you think anyone ever wins the heart? I, I find it no. hard to believe. Unless no. unless you have a season like Matthews where he got 60 the other year. But like if every, all things being equal, he's the best player, and he should win every single year. Now, he could get hurt. That's the, that's, the, that's the only issue. Yeah, he seems like one of those guys who will not. I don't want to jinx you, Conor McDavid, but he just seems unbreakable. He's like a LeBron, I feel. Yeah. I, yeah, I, his first year he missed half the season. Yeah. Um, but to pull but for the most part, he's been, he's been rather healthy considering the way, style of, of hockey plays and, and, and going to the net. He, he's had a couple injuries running into the net. But. Played 64 games last season. Or sorry, he pulled, played all 82. He scored. What the hell is this? This can't be right. I'm looking at the wrong odds. Okay, Never mind. there you go. It's the 2024. Uh, I'm betting games on him. Played. I'm betting on the guy to win the heart. Yeah, last night and it's 2024. I can't even find the right numbers here. Yeah, no problem. What about Eric Carlson? How about Eric Carlson? Yeah, well, he was a shoe in for the Norris. Yeah, but like, man, that looked like a terrible deal for San Jose. But now and he, it wants was. he wants out. He wants out. He wants to go wants to a out. contender. Do you think? Do you? If you're San Jose and you're sitting there. It's ten and a half million or whatever it is. He just got 101 points, won the Norse. And you're whatever. Edmonton, Toronto, any team that's a contender that needs a defenseman. Are you eating any of that contract? You're saying no, he's a hundred and one point the Norse defenseman. It's ten and a half million. That's a lot of dough. Well, I mean, if you're the Leafs, that's not happening. No, there's no Because that he would be the fourth ten million dollar player yeah. plus. And yeah. then you have uh the Nylander situation. Yeah. He's gonna want ten. He's going to want, yeah, he should. Uh, my thing with the Nylander, I, we're talking about Carlson, but yeah. Nylander, if he wants 10, he's got to go. He's got to go. Um, it depends uh, also how much San Jose eats, so that contract, or if they get a third team. 
They get like an Arizona or a Minnesota to take 25% of the contract or yeah. whatever the case may be. That's the only way I see that see that happening. You're going to go 10 mil on, on a defenseman? who is he going to repeat what he did? Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely, except for he was so good before. Like that, He's an excellent defenseman. That's the thing, right? Yeah. Like he's been so good and then just terrible for a couple of years. The problem is with this hard salary cap, you can't make these deals. Teams have to retain some money. Has yeah. to. San Jose's not going to want to, though. Yeah, you so can you find take, another team. Another I know team. Chicago needs some players, but that's a team that's being thrown around as th- that can eat up some salary. They just did that, essentially. Yeah, they just did that. We'll talk about that deal in With a little Boston. bit and how that could affect yeah. Connor Bedard for sure. But yeah, no, like if you look 25%, what's that, $2.5 million? You could stomach probably, you could stomach nine, you could stomach eight, you know? Yeah, so two and a, so you'd be you'd be at $8 million for Which I, I think is doable. I think that's I think doable. doable. And $2.5 million for a team that's rebuilding, I don't think Yeah, there's a, a rumor deal. about him going back to Ottawa as well, but I don't know if that's the right fit right now. Yeah, no. It'd be interesting, though, for him to yeah. go back there. Don't see that very often. Yeah. Occasionally, you see a superstar like that leave, not contentiously, but just didn't work out. I'd love then... to see him like on an Edmonton, but they, they have the Evan Bouchard thing. They're kind of up against it, against the cap, too. But he fits in perfectly for Edmonton. Yeah. Like that is a perfect defenseman for them. I think so. I think so. I think I think he's going to be, well, he wants to be on the move. I think he's going to be on the move. We'll see how it all breaks down. But like you say, when you have a, a Norris defenseman who scores 101 points and you... You, it's a you unicorn, like to, man. You like to get something back from. You, you know what I mean? You like to get yeah. something back from. But we're going to talk a little bit more about the NHL uh, coming up and then into the MLB with Sean McCormick a little bit later on in the show. We'll be right back here on Bet 99's The Parlay Show, Canada's sports betting show. <laughs> Welcome back to Bet 99's The Parlay Show, Canada's sports betting show. I'm Rob Conway. And I'm excited to be here. Albert Vartanian, my co-host. How are also you doing, my man? Yeah, here. well, good, because we're both here for another 20 minutes or 30 minutes, <laughs> yeah. so we don't really have a choice. I uh, am really interested about, we just had the awards. We just talked about them. Yeah. We got the draft coming up. We got Connor Bedard, obviously going to go number one. Fantilli, probably two. We don't need to get it in depth. We're not going to break down any tape Also, here. by the way, I yeah. think on the show, was it last week, we were talking about how many points Bedard yes. was going to get? And I was like, yeah, I'm with you guys around yeah. 65 points. I'm thinking like... He might break the mold this season. So, but here's season. here's my question. I was I'm thinking going, like going to bring this up points. because we had it up on 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 socials as well. I set the line at sixty five and a half. Barney was at sixty five right on. You were comfortable with that line. Taylor Hall just got traded. Yeah. to Chicago. I mean, look, lots can happen for them. Let's just assume on day one the puck drops and Taylor Hall is playing alongside Connor Bedard. Does that change for you? The sixty five and a half numbers. That now seventy and a half, seventy five and a half. Like, what do you think? Look, if you were to put Bedard in between Dreisaitl and McDavid or Matthews and Martin, of course, it's going to be like 90. Hey, you but put me, I can barely skate. You put me between those guys <laughs> yeah, and I'm yeah, scoring yeah. 60. So, like, maybe. obviously playing with better players, and he had no yeah. players in Chicago, that's going to improve his number. But do you think a guy like Taylor Hall, Nick Foligno just signed a contract as well. He's going to yeah. be sticking around. He probably won't play with him. But, you know, getting a little bit more talent around, do you, and you think he's going to break the mold. What does this do to push up his number? It should. I mean, you're playing with a playmaker. Look what Taylor Hall did with... Boston, you know, the greatest regular season team. He was yeah. pretty good in the playoffs, too. It's only going to elevate Bedard's game. I just want to see who else is going to be there. I think they need a few more players because if that, what I'm assuming that's going to be the first line, you would think Taylor yeah. Hall with, with Bedard and whoever else they're going to put on the line could be Felino, but they need a, other players to mix and match and obviously how he fits into the game. But the way the game is now, these guys, there's, there's no enforcers. Players aren't really getting killed every time they go on the ice. Yeah. So I, I think it's going to be a lot more open for a player of his caliber who's got a fantastic shot, can score some goals. I'm going to go over. I'm thinking closer to 80, 90 points. Really? Yeah. Point of game guy he's right gonna be on the, the He's going to be on the ice a lot. Chicago's going to be bad, but they're going to score a lot of goals too, I think, having him. Yeah, they're going <sighs> to... Point of game right out of the gate is tough. I know Crosby and Ovechkin both had really, really great rookie seasons. Um, amazing numbers from them. But uh, it, it hasn't, you know, Matthews had a decent season. Of course, McDavid got hurt, as we talked about. Did Matthews um, open up with like four goals? Yeah, four or five? Four, four goals in the first game. Four goal night. Yeah. <laughs> they lost in overtime to Ottawa. <laughs> oh, and, and, oh, nice. And, and it was his That's fault. good trivia. And it was his fault. Yeah, yeah. He remembered in the post, he's like, yeah, I scored four goals, but my guy went and scored the game winner, so that, that wasn't done. great. But, uh, but yeah, no, McDavid was a point of game guy. He only played like 40 plus games in his rookie year. So it is possible, and he is up with the likes you'd expect of Ovechkin and Crosby yeah. and Matthews and McDavid uh, as a generational talent. But, um, you know, he, the thing about, I think, those four guys as opposed to Bedard, I think, is they could create for themselves because they're bigger, stronger. You not- can too, though. Can he, though? Yeah, man. You think so? Yeah, I didn't watch much of him playing in junior, but watching him play in the World Juniors, 
he did a lot himself. He did a lot himself, but I still remember at the blue line, and there was a picture actually of him um, on the NHL Twitter uh, standing beside the guy, I guess the four guys that are kind of going to go one, two, three, four. He's small, man. He is small. He's a head smaller than... not. There's a, uh, he's Sneaky Jack, though. Did you see that combine thing? No. Like, sneaky Jack. Is he? Yeah, yeah. He's getting a bit bigger. I don't know how big he needs to get. I mean, that was a conversation when Patrick Kane came into the league. Yeah. And it looks the same. He's obviously probably put on maybe like 15 or 20 pounds over his entire career, but sometimes that's overrated. The same thing with uh, Victor Wembanyama in the NBA. Everyone's like, he's got to bulk up, bulk up. And then, well, look at KD. Has KD really bulked up since his rookie season? Probably not that much. So sometimes you think about it. I know hockey's more of a physical game, but when you're a player like Bedard, who can avoid these types of players and has the speed and the puck handling and that type of awareness, I think he'll be fine. Like, I don't think he needs to bulk up Literally, like hit the weights and that might hurt his game yeah. too. Yeah, but I, I, I think when you're 19 years old, you're just naturally gonna, naturally gonna get gonna, bigger, gonna yeah. get bigger with yeah. some and some man strength. Like I, I always have the you know we have this argument all the time. I not mean you personally, but you know after some NFL football team goes like one in 15 or now one in 16 or 0 in 17. Arizona Cardinals. Uh, yeah. yeah, and and then and then uh, you know Alabama goes undefeated and wins that. Oh, Alabama could beat Arizona. And it's not even no. close. Yeah, now, yeah. first of all, there's like 10 NFLers on Alabama, and there are all NFLers on Arizona. But forget about that, too. Even if it was the Toronto Argonauts or, or some you know, uh, USFL team, to put a 26-year-old man against 19-year-old, 20-year-old players, it's not fair. That's what I want to see. I want to see the Argos against Alabama. What's the line? What are you giving What are you giving the Argos in that game? I'm, I think in the Argos, Toronto, I think Argos we'll do fa- it at the Dome. I, I think the Argos are the favorite. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because because games are won and lost on the O line and D line, and you are putting up guys that are just way stronger than the Alabama question. team. Are we playing three down football or four down football? Four, we'll have to play four down football. We okay, well, no, they can't be the favorites. You don't think so? No, it's three down football team, dude. This well, is this needs to happen. Bet nine nine, <laughs> make these bets happen. See, that's the thing. We couldn't. We could. We could probably get the Argos on board, but I don't think we could pay enough money to get Alabama. No, on board. no. But you're right, man. Listen, the professional professionals for for a yeah. reason. You can't just bring in some youngsters and expect them to beat them. And it so, and that's right. why I think even if Connor Bernard doesn't get bigger, he'll get stronger. Yeah, I'm excited to watch stronger. him. It just sucks. He's on the West Coast. I'm not gonna see him too much. Got to stay up late. I hate that whole situation. But who Bernard? Yeah. Well, Eight o'clock, it's Chicago. It's no, only one hour. A lot of those 10 p.m. games. It's past my bedtime. What do you mean? Yeah. Why is he playing at 10? Playing in Chicago. He's going to play a lot of West Coast late games. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah. You know Chicago is no, like I know. eight He's hours play late. <laughs> no, I know. By the way, I love Chicago. One of my favorite Great cities. Town. Great I went town. There. I feel like Chicago is what Toronto should be. I don't know if you did this trip, but if you didn't, you would have loved it. So I'd never been to Chicago, and I'd never been to Wrigley. Toronto played, FC played the Chicago Fire the yeah. same weekend as the Jays played uh, Chicago uh, Bears. Cubs? Uh, Bears. Cubs. Yeah. So we went down uh, the TFC uh, Kings in the North, which is a fan base yeah, down yeah. that thing. Uh, they did a they did a thing that we drove down, and they did a bus to the games and stuff. So I got to see the FC at Chicago Fire, which... Fine. I, I was with the TFC. Still fun. Fans. Yeah, you're on a trip. Man, went to Wrigley. So cool. I still haven't been to Wrigley. So cool, man. I was down there. I walked past Soldier Field. I didn't see Wrigley. I really wanted to, though. It's Even outside of it's cool. Like, we went down the first day to try and get tickets because um, we had tickets just for the one game. And they were way too expensive, so we just watched it in a bar in Wrigleyville. But outside of it, was it's 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 a, you got to do it. Atmosphere is great. Yeah, I know. I got a few on the list, man. I got to do... I've only done one Major League Baseball stadium outside of Toronto, and mm-hmm. that's... Um, Oh my God, Coors Field in Colorado. Nice. Unbelievable. Yeah. They played the Dodgers. Same thing. I was telling you about a 0 0 game before. 0 0. At Coors Field? And the Rockies won uh, one zip. I think it was in the 11th, and it was like, a, whatever, wild pitch or whatever it was. So you're at the highest scoring stadium in the world. Didn't see a single home run. Didn't see a single home run. The over a under lights, uh, uh, the under one and a half would have been about uh, a plus. Imagine like, betting one under one and a half in a baseball game. Going to oh the game? Oh my God. Just. Dying yeah. on every pitch. The huge difference, though, when you go to the States and you go to a, a proper ball field. I love the Dome. Don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not crapping on the Dome. But when you're at a real baseball stadium and it's open and every you can walk around the entire concourse and every angle you can see the field. Mm. There's so much going on. It's just it's a different vibe. I like it. I like it a I lot. Lo- I loved Wrigley. I thought it was great. Um, our guy Kevin Candy just came back from Pittsburgh not too long ago. Yeah. That stadium apparently is great. Oh, did he I, go? Yeah. I know uh, Seattle has a beautiful stadium. My uh, friend of mine was in Baltimore, yeah, which is a very nice uh, stadium as well. I'm with you on on the open air aspect of it, but I'm going to the game tonight. And if you look out the window, it doesn't look that great. No, Dome's closed tonight for sure. But I know open air is great. I don't have to worry. 
that game's going to start at 7.07. And that's a nice thing to have. As much yeah. as the, op- the open air is an option because they can open it up. Yeah. But I know first pitch will be 707. I don't got to worry about going down there in a rain out or anything like that. They're going to have to put the poncho on. Benefits. Yeah. The garbage the bag. There'd be no poncho. Yes. They, Rob would be at the local establishment watching, oh, the, there you watching go. the rain Were game. Were you going up to the 500s and hang out with the Corona deck? Not or? a bad idea. I haven't been up there. I've been the two games. haven't been up there yet. We're yeah. going to go early and probably go check out the Corona uh Nice patio. Yeah, Gosman on the mound. Jay's looking good, man. You love Gosman. He's your favorite guy. I do. I don't don't go watch him live. When I did zero zero, he pitched a hell pitched a gem, hell of a game. I think yeah. it's a complete game as well. Uh, but yeah, the, Jay's putting runs on the board I, now. When you good. told me you don't you don't want to ever see Gosman again, I was like, what game did he give up ten runs? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, no, he pitched a gem, and I hated yeah, every. It was like I'm it. telling you, game number 23, 24 of the season. If that's wild card divisional game, World Series, I'm all for it. Yeah. But I want to go see some runs. It's also the batters, then the hitters. Well, yeah, it's just like betting. No one. But shout out to Vladdy, but we'll talk about him later. Yeah, we're gonna bring. Finally, the breakout. A minute, yeah, that bat's hot. It's hot, man. It always heats up in the summer, doesn't it, for the yeah. Jays? Yeah. They are second half team over the last couple of years. We'll get into it a bit more. Yeah, approaching the All Star uh, break now in a wild card spot. Yeah, it's all looking good. All right, well, that NHL segment turned into a little bit of MLB, and we hey. got another 14 minutes to go with Sean, which is great because guess what? It is the summer, and that is the sport that is on. <laughs> so looking forward to Sean. He'll be in studio right here to my left in just a minute. But we're going to take a quick break, and this is, be- this is not being, is the Parlay Show. Coming up next, Sean McCormick. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the Parlay Show. Rob Conway, Albert Vartanian, and now, who's, by the way, like live tweeting uh, Alec Manoa on the mound right now. I'm not live tweeting. I was reading about it. Well, yeah, reading live tweets about Alec Manoa on the mound. And to help break down the Toronto Blue Jays and a bunch of MLB stories is our good friend, Sean McCormick. Yeah, no, thanks for having me on. Uh, I look Shiny for, boy. I look forward to he- seeing what Alec Manoa can do in the Florida Complex well, League. Yeah, as of recording this right now, Alec Manoa is on the mound for the Florida Complex League Jays, um, and he's given up, a, I think, a, a single, a leadoff single followed by a pair of ground outs. So it's not going well. Bring no. him back up. He's ready to go. Is that, is that bad? <laughs> Who knows? This, I, this is like some account. I don't even know if this account's real. Well, could you imagine fake tweeting about about Alex well, and and you fake tweet about him with two ground outs? Like there's it's not someone like, that falls. Faces loaded, grand slam. I that know. would be a fake one, maybe, but it, not. It sounds realistic, right? <laughs> That's why they want to do it. Yeah. Someone falls for fake tweets. Well, I, hey, I fell for a fake. Uh, Kevin this is an all time. Uh, oh my like god! A couple weeks ago, yeah, I've done that too. During, but uh, someone made what? a graphic. Yeah, in the whole it night, super official. Like you got to be some kind of like loser to make those kinds of tweets and like with like super professionally done and like a, tw- a trade that was like reasonable mm-hmm. it was like Biggio and Simber for like right handed reliever from the Royal Scott Barlow, <laughs> so Scott Barlow. Scotty Barlow. and he's, he's rumored to be on the move too yeah. like before Closer. the deadline so. Closer. I come yeah. in we're talking about the show he's like did you hear about the Scott Barlow deal I said what what, <laughs> what are you talking about I have to admit, I think I, when I worked at uh, uh, Sirius XM for the NHL Network, I think I retweeted during the trade deadline from, by a Pierre Lebrunt account <laughs> or something like that. Hey, it happens, man. You got burned, yeah. You got, you know, you're doing a show, you're on a thing, you look over, oh yeah, that looks real, boom, 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 retweet, and then it's like, I have way too many replies in the last 30 seconds for this, this to be good. Because right. <laughs> if you ever want to know if anyone follows your account, just tweet something wrong and you'll see that lots of people oh, yeah, read yeah, your yeah, stuff. Yeah, trust me. It's really easy to tell because you're like, have, oh, wow, this tweet's doing really well when it comes to engagement. What did I screw up? <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> even harder now with the whole verified thing, right? You don't know, I know who's legit, who's not. I just I just look at the followers now. If you have like you know 16,000 yeah. or, tw- like, or more yeah. followers, I feel like that you're probably going to get more uh, traction and more engagement. So that's who I think is the, the real people and, and the verified accounts. The real Sean Even McCormick. though they're not verified. Yeah. Fair enough. It's a crazy world out there in the, in the land of Twitter, but uh, we do our best. We do our best here at the Parlay um, and Homestand. So, Blue Jays, playoff spot. Mm-hmm. They're in. A couple weeks For ago, now. we were doing a show with Barney Albert, and we were in Panic City. Uh, then they went and won two straight against the Marlins. Really shouldn't have lost one against Oakland, but fine. Two out of three. You're sweeping a team is, is hard, regardless of who you're playing. Uh, looking good. They got the Giants coming in. But um, the pitching's been really solid. Kevin Gosman on the mound tonight. If Albert had tickets, he'd be, he'd be getting rid of them. I'd be he's, front row, dude. Yeah, he's not interested. But What do you mean he's not interested? Because he pitches too well when, when Albert's around. <laughs> Isn't that a good thing? Or you want some action? No, I went to a 0-0 game into extras. <laughs> so? Well, come on. Well, I wanted a little more action than and that, And like too. I said before, it was like the 20th game of the season. So oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I love Kevin Gosman. It has nothing to do with Kevin. 
It's Dollar Dog Night. That's tonight, too. Is it tonight? It is oh, yeah. Did I ever tell you about... No, did I ever tell you? So I went to a game with a buddy of mine, and uh, it was a Tuesday, early on in the season. And I was standing outside, and he was he was late, so um, I was going to wait to go in with him because I had the tickets on my phone. And I was hungry, so I'm like, All right, I'm just going to get a hot dog. I'm not street meeting forever. So I go and buy an $8 sausage, eat it. It was fine. I go inside. It's Dollar Dog Night. <laughs> Who the hell buys an eight dollar sausage outside the state? Like, amateur dollar. hour, complete no, amateur no. move. I usually do that too. The move for me is you get there and you hit a street dog before you go into. The I dog. know, not on dollar dog night no, though. No. <laughs> it's good about eight dogs for that eight dollar sausage you had, you know. So then my buddy's like, "We're gonna get dogs tonight." I'm like, "I just ate a sausage, so no." And I had one. I contributed to the what the forty two thousand hot dogs that were eaten that day. I had. That's one. what I look forward to the most when I go to a Jays game. The, the dollar food, dogs food and drink is hot dogs. Yeah, that, just yeah, the man. dogs alone. Go, yeah, go. You have a street dog on the way in. You have a couple more dogs on the way out. On the way out, you have another dog. And there's only one guy I go to. I'll tell. I don't know what location he's in. I'll let you guys know. All right, know secret location for the best street. <laughs> yeah, I think he's a Turkish Rogers guy. He's in Toronto. Well, I'm going tonight to the game. I will not be buying a sausage from your from your number one guy on the way All in. Right. Just because. I'm going to get a couple of dollar dogs. Oh, definitely. Anyways, let's get into the actual oh, action on the field sense. and not how many hot dogs Rob's going to eat tonight. At the over under is probably two and a half. I don't eat a lot of food. Oh, that's low. Over under on beers, over. <laughs> uh, so we are going with the pitching is our first topic because it's been pretty good. Uh, you say Kikuchi had a fantastic last uh, last two outings. Really, Gosman's looked good. Bassett, you know, a little bit of a struggle against Texas when he had a look good there and he gave up a big lead. Wouldn't expect that, but for a team that um, that was going to be a question mark as well as the bullpen but um, it's looked really good and it's looked good with just a four man rotation we were joking off the top about Alec Manoa but without him in the lineup and the way they're going what are your thoughts? Yeah I think right now you have to be worried about uh, like Manoa the most and then it's probably Bassett and then it's probably like Kikuchi, Berrios and then Gosman like, yeah. I'm not worried about Gosman at all but I feel like that's, that's where the worries is so for tonight's game with Gosman on the mound I mean, I expect another ace performance from from Kevin Gosman. You would hope so, right? I mean, the the main concern with the Jays starters is if another one goes down. That's what I keep thinking about. Yikes. I know it's a negative way of thinking about it, mm-hmm. but they're down to four, right? Yeah. They can run a four-man rotation. Uh, apparently, it's going to be Gosman, Barrios, and um, Bassett mm-hmm. in this series. Yeah. So I think they sk- they would have skipped the bullpen start, right, with the off yeah, day? Yeah, it's possible they go back to the bullpen start. Probably against Boston, right? They go with uh, Trevor Richards or whoever that's going to pitch. But that that's an issue. I think the Jays really need to make some sort of move. You need to bring in another pitcher. You got to. It doesn't even have to be a pitcher that lights it up. Someone just to eat some innings. Give there's, the bullpen there, a break. There's a guy tonight, uh, Julio Turan, uh, pitching from Milwaukee. He's I keep up, hearing his name pop up. Comes up, Came off the you know the heap, and he's been fantastic for them. Uh, that's what you got to find. Now, it, look, it's not easy. But when your first option out of AAA is Mitch White, that's not acceptable. No. And it's it's what, game 80 into the year? Like, you need to have figured it out. Well, by I think now. things would have been different if Tiedemann didn't get injured, right? You think not, Tiedemann not saying come he'd out? come in and be the savior, but I think he was a guy that they were expecting to bring up at some point to hopefully eat up some innings. Yeah, he yeah. got a lot of looks in, in, yeah. in spring training. Yeah, he looked but good. He's still young. I don't know if he, like, you're right. I don't know if he would have been the savior for this team. I do think they have to do something. Uh, they have. Uh, Hinge and Drew is coming back oh, after yeah. the All Star break. Yeah, yeah. I don't expect him to fill that starter role. No, obviously I... he was the starter in the past, but he's coming off Tommy John. They're working him into bullpen, and mm-hmm. he just threw two innings uh, in, in spring training or not spring training in, in the Florida Complex lead alongside Alec Manoa uh, last week. So he's on track to come back after the All Star break. You have Chad Green on track to come back after the All Star break. He's just a one one inning high leverage guy though out of the bullpen. So the, the starters will need you'll need to do something. I don't know where you go. I don't. I don't know if it's Julio Tehran. I mean, he's he's got a lot of quality starts coming out for the Bruins. Doesn't right sound now. great. Like, but but his peripherals aren't that great. So, no. I I'm not willing to pay a lot to get somebody like Julio Tehran. But uh, the Jays do need to do something. Depth at every position for the Jays. Yeah, you know what the concern is, though, Sean, with, with Ryu is that his innings are going to be capped. They're going to have to yeah, ease probably. him in, right? So he's not going to come in and eat six, seven innings. That's not happening. No, no. Even if he is solid, like they're doing it with Kikuchi, they still cap Kikuchi. Kikuchi can go deeper in certain games too. Yeah, but like we're chat- chatting about too, you have you have Ryu coming out of the pen. Uh, right now, the Jays yeah. only have one lefty reliever in Tim Meza, so you bring in Ryu to do that and fill that role, and and he can fill like the two to three innings role that a Trevor Richard can do, that a Bowden Francis can do. So that's sort of how I imagine they use Ryu here. Not, Pearson, not as, as Pearson can do. Yeah, he can do two or three as well. But yeah, I mean, you once you get into the deeper season and into the playoffs, yeah. you need to play those matchups. Even with the three batter rule, you still need to play like the lefty righty matchups. So to have another lefty out of the pen is going to be crucial for the Jays. Okay, if the, the wild card starts tomorrow, Sean, who's who's your one? Let's go one. Gosman. Who's your one, two, three? 
Gosman, Brios. Oh, Brios. Bassett. I think that's the question, right? Who's two? I think it's Brios too. Right now it is. I mean, over the last few starts, like Bassett hasn't looked great. I mean, uh, he pit, He hasn't got out of the fifth inning in his last three starts, uh, giving up five runs in like two <laughs> and, those three starts. And now he doesn't want to call his own pitches anymore, so they're changing that. He's like, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. He just he's done with it. It's a lot of work. Like, same for Manoa. You can see when Bassett pitches, like he walks around a lot. He's playing and he's breathing pretty it's heavy. Like I case. think. <laughs> well, he's a competitive guy. I mean, they're all competitive guys. What was but... his second outing where he destroyed the iPad? And it's like, hey, guys, I'm Chris Bassett. This is who I am. Yeah, and I'm I'm fine with that. Be a fiery competitor. I love it, too. I, yeah. I love it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, something might have to change. He hasn't had the results over the last few starts. Yeah. He's had a pretty good season. Nothing against Bassett. But I just think moving forward, you have to change a little bit of something if, if he feels like it's not working. And and Danny Jansen calls a hell of a game behind the plate. So. So my, I'm fine with Jansen calling his game. My 101 Bassett for the Cy Young is not going to hit this season. No, but no, but I think I no, mean I wanted no, to get it's into not, it a Albert. It's <laughs> not going to hit. When he went on that nice little <laughs> stretch, I'm like, okay, it's a little sprinkle. But sprinkle. I mean, like right now, you can look at somebody like a Kevin Gosman at five to one to win mm. the AL Cy Young. Yeah, I mean, up. there's uh, I think Framber or no Shane McClanahan, Shane McClanahan is a favorite. Is he's favorite probably going to win. He's a bit hurt right now. He's flown off th- uh, flat ground. Garrett Cole's been struggling just a little bit lately. Fran Valdez, Fran- who's Fran pitching Valdez, tonight yeah. as well, uh, he's been he's been pretty solid. So I mean, my picks right now, if you would be either Gosman or Fran Valdez. You have a look at Atani, eleven to one. I mean, nah, it's tough when you, you're probably going to win the MVP to to also get the Cy Young. Yeah, it's it's tough. I could see him doing it. He's a hell of a player. Um, I'd have to dive a little bit deeper into his stats to figure out where he's been with, in relation to the other guys. But right now, uh, like. Valdez to me has the best numbers, and then then it's probably Gosman with all the strikeouts that he's been able to Gosman, accumulate. Plus five hundred, that's a nice number. Yeah, yeah, I like. And it. I think he, I think he can do it. I mean, just got to get a few more wins. I mean, as weird as wins are in baseball, like you have to get them. To yeah, win. So it counts, dude. Yeah, yeah you got sure. you got to be able to do that. We're 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 running long on time, so we're gonna we're gonna have you back for the sec for another segment. Great. We'll talk a bit more about Vladdy's bat. So, because I want to talk about how he's heating up, plus a couple other things to do with the Jays and uh, some other you know interesting stories right now with Ellie Dela Cruz and all those other things. And then we're gonna get into the parlays parlay. Oh, beauty. it took me a long time to figure out what the name of the parlay was supposed to be. <laughs> Not really. Not really at all. But before uh, before we go to the break, so. You don't think Shane? So you think an injured Shane McClanahan is? I almost think that's a better thing because if he only gets twenty eight starts, I think he still wins. I mean, he was my favorite. I mean, he was the favorite before yeah. the season started, and, and he was my favorite as well. And I thought, I mean, I never bet that top of the board. I mean, just one pitcher injury and, and you're done, and you're done, right? Yeah. So I, I don't look at the top of the board now. It's a good time to look at the top of the board because you have a sample size and stuff. Um, yeah, I just you worry maybe he comes back and he's not the same that he was uh, before the injury. He's still worth it at, at like what is it plus two seventy five yeah. or something along those lines. So he'd be worth a shot, but I just think with health concerns, I think that I would lean towards Gosman or Valdez. We're not even yeah, at the All Star break. It's yet gonna either, be right? it's gonna Lots be really to interesting. But we're gonna we're gonna have Sean. Don't go anywhere. Okay. You're gonna stick here beside us. We're gonna talk a little bit about the Blue Jays and we're gonna get into the board check. See what we like on the board at Bet ninety nine. <laughs> Welcome back to Bet 99's The Parlay Show, Canada's sports betting show. Rob Conway, Albert Vartanian, and joining us for another segment here, Sean McCormick. Return of the Max, yes. Johnny Max. Happy to be here. We, uh, we went a little long there on the pitching staff in Toronto, but hey, it's a positive for the team right now. Well, now let's get into the bats a bit, and Vladdy's bat finally is heating up. Um, you know, from a betting perspective, I've always been a type of guy, when I looked at the Jays, at least the last couple seasons, as let's bet the team total over because they were hammering the ball. Hasn't been a lot of that. Been close games. Haven't been a lot of, you know, scoring a lot of runs. But this team is a second half team and they play a lot better when it warms up. What are your thoughts? How, first of all, how are you looking at Vladdy? <clears throat> we saw with his kind of, his analytic numbers, his exit velo, his hard hit rate, all that stuff was good. Uh, do you think this is more what we're going to see the rest of the year? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, no, I do. I, I mean, you look at Vladdy, and I, I think the Jays in general, people look at the Jays and they're like down on the Jays, and it's panic, like you talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. Panic City, panic city. They're still the 10th best team in the league. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's good. That's really good. Yeah. It's just it's just unfortunate that three teams in the AL East are ahead of the yeah, Jays, right. right? So it's tougher to get into the playoffs that way. Right now, you're only a half game ahead of the Houston Astros. So when it comes to Vladdy, everything looks great. 
I mean, he's he's except for the home runs. I mean, he's he's got like 49 RBIs. That's like 16th in the league. A 284 average or something like that. That's like 30th in the league. Mm-hmm. Something around those lines. He's down to 11 home runs, which is like 68th, 69th in the league. So that's where the problem is. And like you said, with the whole lineup, is that they're just not hitting the ball out of the ballpark right mm-hmm. now. Um, but I expect it to continue. I mean, when you hit the ball as hard as he does just positive results are going to happen for you it's just a shame that is i believe his um, launch angle is like eight degrees or 8.5 degrees so he's hitting into a ton of double plays hitting a ton of grounders even if you hit it 113 miles an hour you hit it right at a, at mm. a, a major yeah. league defender yeah you're going to hit into outs unfortunately so king of double raise, plays man you just need to raise that launch angle just a little bit more and he did that against oakland on the weekend with his first two home runs in the rogers center this year and he'll be just fine. He's already just fine, but he'll be even better. You yeah. can see the numbers. See the expectation rise. too, right? Plus four hundred to hit a bomb today. By Plus four hundred. Yeah, that's you go into the game. You got to sprinkle something. Yeah. I, what about the under one and a half? Which is going to no, be a zero zero Gosman no, game. No, yeah, no. I, uh, plus four hundred for a bomb. I don't yeah, mind that. man. You go into the dome. He's feeling it right now. He's still at home, home cooking. This is great. It's a great spot for him. Yeah. Now, the Giants are a good team though. They're rolling. I think they won nine straight on the road. Something like, like 12 that. Twelve and two in their last four. They're one of yeah. like along with them, the Braves, the Reds. They're one of the hottest teams in baseball right now. The Cubs were doing well for a time there too. So I, yeah, the Reds have lost three in a row now. Yeah, I mean coming you back roll down off earth. Twelve. Well, again, and you're coming in and you're playing the AL East. I mean, that, I mean that was just last night. Yeah. But the AL East is just. No, you made a good point. Listen, we talked about this when the Jays were in last in the AL East. Now the Red Sox are last in the AL East, still above 500, can be top of the AL Central. That, that tells you all you need to know. When you're play, like, it, when, when it's the Jays against the Bo Sox after this Giants series, it shouldn't be, oh, the Jays are playing the last place Red Sox. They're playing yeah. the Red Sox, yeah. who are in the AL East, who can be the best team in the Central. Like, that's how strong this division is. It's crazy. Yeah, like, even we chatted about, like, I don't know, a week or two ago, and it was like, Jays have a soft schedule coming up. Yeah. And yeah, Boston's one of those teams one like a couple games below you we looked at the Giants as one of those teams but then they go and reel off 12 yeah, in a row and now you're like row. well now that's not so easy and then we've got the Tigers uh, right before the All-Star break I'll be I'll be live in Detroit uh, to see a couple, oh, of, a couple of those games shiny. live and on location yeah, yeah, I'm Johnny go. Mac I'm All right, go. it's gonna be great. let's just look at the NL for one second uh, you got league leaders or you know sorry division leaders Braves Diamondbacks and Brewers. The Braves, obviously, they're like a World Series fair. But the Dodgers just snuck into with this little losing streak for Cincinnati are now in a wild card spot. Marlins and the Giants as well. These are the teams that are not. The Phillies, the Padres, the Mets, and the Cardinals. All teams that you would have thought were not guarantees to... I mean, look, the Mets and Padres, are you would think, are guarantees to make the playoffs. Yeah. And yet... The Diamondbacks look really good. You know, they have some, you know, former Blue Jays on their team. The Brewers, I think they'll probably right. drop off, but the Marlins as well, which they don't even have Alcan- Alcantara or Alcantara pitching well. Like, I mean, he's lost the complete. He's pitching complete, tonight. He's pitching tonight. Going against them. Yeah. I mean, do you think any of those teams, like, who do you think is dropping out, though? I mean, the Braves aren't. The Giants and Dodgers, you wouldn't think so. You really just leaves two spots with the Brewers and Marlins. But the Mets are a disaster. Disaster. They're going to be eight games under 500 heading into July. That just. With a $350 million payroll? Like, that can't happen. The funny thing is they score like six runs every game and still find a way to lose. Uh, and w- them and the Padres have the, like two of the biggest payrolls in the, yeah. in the game. Yeah. And to not be able to get a winning record above 500 is nuts to me. And they could be like, I think Buck's going to get fired. Yeah, no, there's there's right? heavy rumors about Buck Showalter getting Buck let go. Buck is my, co- uh, my manager. Anyway. <laughs> well, he's a good manager. What about in, like, 2005? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 2005, sure. <laughs> Back when he was with the Orioles or whatever. He was linked to the Jays forever, Buck Showalter. Sure. Walter. Never came through, though. Sorry, Buck. No, Not I, a fan. But to answer your question. Mainly because he was the Orioles uh, uh, manager, and they were there in the playoffs. Yeah. Who did he leave on the bench when Edwin hit that home run? Forget the closer that they didn't bring out. Edwin Diaz? No, no, no. For, no, for Baltimore. Remember? Oh, um... Oh, sorry, I'm putting you on the yeah, spot. Yeah, no, I know his name too. Mm. Sorry, anyway, it's gonna bother me. Pitch for the Yankees last. Edwin Edwin hits a bomb, three <sighs> run, they win, and it, and he didn't he didn't want to bring out his closer because it wasn't the time the closer was supposed to come in because they weren't winning the game at the time it was tied. Anyway, that's uh, that that's is. gonna really bother me, dude. We gotta Google that. You guys start chatting. I'll do the Google. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I so I think that uh, like the Marlins just look good right now. They've got a young pitching staff that's doing really well. 
Um, so I could see them holding on to their playoff spot, believe it or not. Um, Diamondbacks, one of the best offenses in baseball. I could see them. And and, the and NL, getting good pitching. And El Cy Young leader, too, uh, doing really well. Are you I, sinking I'm on that chair? Yeah, <laughs> He's I'm going shrinking. now. How am I taller than you? <laughs> this, chair's a, this chair's a little broken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling a charms here, if, if, if people knew that. I'll give I you guys so we'll, distra- we'll distract from, from this, uh, from this uh, comedy act oh we're doing God. right now. I'll give you the initials. ZB. Oh, Zach Britton. Zach Britton. Oh, there we go. Man. We got it. Zach, Zach Britton. Yeah. yeah. Left on the bench. Edwin, three-run bomb. I great. popped my chair back up. We great. should be. We should be great better. moment no, for the Toronto Blue Jays. Good. Good. All right, let's get, in, let's get into let's get into let's get into some action for tonight. We're gonna do a little parlay. I already got Barney's pick. He's gonna go. He's been just smashing the Jays' run line. Um, <laughs> he loves for that, better yeah. or for worse, to be honest with you. But he's rolling with that again. I think that's an aggressive move against a very good Giants yeah. team. But Gosman's on the mound, uh, and the Jays do look better. So that's his pick. Um, but you know, if you go on through the board tonight. There, there, there is a lot of interesting lines for me, and, and I'll, I'll tell you why. You got a team like the Padres, we just talked about struggling, minus 190 right now on the road against the Pirates, who are going downhill a bit. You got the Reds, who were just recently super hot at plus money as well against a good team in the Orioles. Um, Another another good one, which we're going to talk about, the Red Sox and Marlins, is basically a pick 'em. We have the Mets and Brewers minus one forty five for the Mets, plus one twenty five for Brewers team that you know. Quite frankly, we just talk about how bad the Mets have been. The Astros and Cardinals as, is a pick 'em. The Phillies and Cubs is a pick 'em. It's a very competitive night on the board. Um, when you see those lines, uh, how excited do you get? I get really excited because. I'm taking the Astros whether they're minus 160 against the Cardinals with Framber on the mound or minus 115. I get to see him at minus 115. I'm super pumped about yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, there's been some line movement too. I mean, uh, the Astros were minus 120 a little bit ago. Now they're down to minus 115 because the Cardinals hadn't announced a starter yet. Now it's Jordan Montgomery, who's a pretty solid lefty yeah. for the for the Cardinals. And another uh, line that moved too was the Orioles were minus 140 earlier today. They're up to mi- about minus 160. They're so fun to watch, dude. They're so fun to watch. They're so good. Andrew Rabbit's a nice young pitcher for the Reds, but he uh, doesn't strike out a lot of bats, so uh, he's going to be in a bit of trouble against a good Baltimore offense. But they're 19 games over 500. They don't have an ace. It shows you how good Yo, they. No one's Kyle Bradish. Alone, nobody's man. talking about them, but they should be. I think. <laughs> listen, there could be a. I'm not. I was talking from? about them like you were. Ago. It's true. There could be a Rays collapse oh, yeah. coming. There could be. And if a the Rays collapse, there could no. be. There could. I'm just saying there could. Be. There's a chance. And, and the, the Orioles. Ch- I mean, this happened. The last Orioles year could win the, that division. Remember when last year the Yankees were pull about up that 16, 16 games up on the rest of the division, and they had a bit of a collapse. Uh, they oh, made the playoffs and still did really well. The Yanks but, are in trouble too. Man. Yeah, the Yanks. Uh, yeah. And it's not just a judge problem. Like I was looking at some of their numbers. Like Josh Donaldson is batting one ninety five. Their team's not very good. John Carlo, don't call me Mike Stanton, is hitting like 200. Their, their team is not, very, not, their team is not very good. Pitching is if, an issue. If, it's not a judge problem. It's a Yankees problem. Like I mean, you got guys like them. like Volpe and Cabrera that are young that you're trying to rely on a lot. Josh Donaldson, I'm sorry, obviously we know his past this But prime. he's not 195. Sure. Aaron Judge not playing. Stanton has not been great for a few years. Yeah. You know, he had 35 bombs, which is amazing. But still, DJ LeMahieu's not batting the way, you know, over That's 300. A problem, dude. That's a, and they're pitching. Look, Severino just came back. He's struggling a bit. Rodon's never yeah. hasn't even started a game yet, although he's pitching in in uh, the minors. See if he'll come up. You know, a guy like Cortez who throws this weird Nasty 85 Nester? mile an hour. That's gonna get picked Mr. up eventually. Mr. Domingo Herman. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. Like, and listen, team. Aaron Boone needs to slow it down a bit. He's a bit insane. That I know he's like, oh, I'm gonna do what I want to do, but he needs to relax. Let's, listen to this though. So you guys are spot on about everything you just said. The Yankees as a team in June batting 193. Oh my on God. base percentage 254. And uh, runs scored 60, all ranked dead last. This is the Yankees. This yeah, doesn't I mean, make they'll sense. Do something. They'll do something. I mean, what are they going to do? Get four batters? Five? <laughs> I don't know. Aaron Judge, he just did an interview. He's like, they, I wish I can tell you guys when I'm going to come back. I have no idea. Then some guy within the organization, I saw this in a John Heyman article, was like guessing. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm hearing that he's going to come uh, maybe two weeks uh, after the All-Star break. Yeah, but they, th- that's a guess. They replaced Aaron Judge already. Billy McKinney, man. He's oh, doing really we well. Go. Here we go. He's batting like 319. Yeah. Whenever the Yankees are playing, go against them right now. I, I don't like them at Yankee, all. You want to know how 100%. bad they are? They're minus 135 against, guess who? The I mean, Oakland Athletics. Now oh, it's, Paul Blackburn on the mound for the <laughs> Athletics. Give me some Blackburn tonight. I'll take uh, Paul, Blackburn Paul Blackburn against that. Uh, Yanni Brito yeah. is, is starting for the Yankees, but minus 135. I think Brito's more of like an opener type. Probably, I but it doesn't matter. You're playing the Athletics. 
to get minus 135. Yeah, I mean, that's where the Yankees are right now. Maybe you just take the under. What's the, the line there? Eight and a half? Eight. Eight? Mm. In Oakland? In Oakland. Yeah, I don't hate it. Blackburn is not a fantastic pitcher, but he's been pitching fairly decently. And again, it's this Yankees lineup? Yeah. The, the, worth a shot. The Orioles are plus 860 to win the East. Yankees plus 1400, Jays 15 to 1. The Rays right now are minus 715 to win the East. You're not letting the Rays go. The Rays collapse go. Hey, you're, you're all over the Rays. I'm, minus 715? As, as soon as this show's done, I'm I'm betting the Orioles to win the East. Okay. I like it. Speaking of betting tonight, we are going to do the first ever parlay parlay. We already have Matthew Barnaby's pick because he's on route to Saskatoon. So he gave us his pick of the Jays' run line, which right. is currently at plus 120 on the book at bet99.ca. Um, I will start with you, Sean. What are you going to go with tonight? Yeah, I'm a bit reluctant with this pick, to be honest with you. I look, I was, I've was, had a really good gut feeling about it. Way to sell it, dude. I had a really good gut feeling about yeah. it. I started to dig into we the numbers a little bit. We have to all take this pick. You're not <laughs> supposed to yeah. say how terrible it is it's right not off terrible. the bat. It's not terrible, but I... I it's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. If I'm already going to be the guy who lets you down, I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's just going to happen, and it's going to happen repeatedly, so tread carefully. Uh, I'm going to go with the Boston Red Sox against the Miami Marlins. Again, Albert hit on it earlier. Sandy Alcantara hasn't been pitching very well lately, uh, giving up five runs. You a, think Manoa's lost it? Yeah. Yeah. This guy's the He's same, trying to figure out the same situation. He's got an ERA over five, God, I'm sure. and he's playing against the, the Boston Red Sox. Solid offense. Again, AL East, you saw the Marlins struggle against mm-hmm. the Jays. They, I mean, they, they did pretty well, but yeah. Jay, the Jays took two or three against the Marlins last week. Um, and he's going up against Garrett Willock, who's been pitching pretty well for the Red Sox. So, gone into the sixth inning in his last three starts. So, uh, give me the Boston Red Sox at about minus 125 or so. The Bo Sox taking down uh, former Cy Young. Winner. I also like the Bo Sox, maybe more than he does. Apparently. I do like them. Do you want to make your pick? No, I'll, I'll, I'll take few, your I pick. like, so I'll say a couple oh, team, teams I like before I give you the official pick. I like the, uh, I do like the Phillies. Sure. Because Jamison Tyon is an absolute gas can. The Cubs have only won two games when he starts, so I okay. like the Phillies. But the official pick is going to be the Diamondbacks over the Rays. The Rays collapse start oh, now. Okay. No, Zach Gallen, listen to this. At home, his recent home game logs here, 7-0, and ERA 1 with a whip under 1. He's unbelievable right now. I like That's it. one of the reasons why yeah, he's up there. Field. Yeah, I'm going to go with the D-backs tonight, minus 125. Division leader. Yeah. I like I like that pick. All right, quickly for me, I am going to go with Framber Valdez. I think he'll win the Cy Young. Uh, minus 115 against St. Louis. You put those all together, and guess what? It's plus 1230. Let's go. Let's go. The very first ever parlay. Parlay. That is what it's going to be, plus 1230. Good luck with that pick, and we are going to come back to wrap the show. Sean, stick around. Why oh, okay. not? Right, sure, buddy? All right, it. here we are. The parlay show with Ben 99. Yeah. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the Parlay Show with Bet Nine. I can a sports betting show. Rob Conway, Albert Vartani, and then for one more segment, it's our guy Sean, Sean Mac. McCormick. All right, we're going to wrap the show. Again. Sorry to, to cut you yeah, off. Yeah, no, go ahead. Uh, Manoa update. Yeah, he's given up five runs. Oh in my god! No way. At the F- Florida Complex League, which when you guys say it, I don't think of it as the Florida like this is a complex where people are in. I'm thinking it as as a the Florida difficult to understand league. Like so, it's a complex complex thing. Through uh, through two innings, oh, man. two innings, two, pitched, innings. Pitched, two strikes, a walk, five hits, five earned, and a home run. Yeah, that's not good. Wow. I oh, put him back in the lab. Yeah. I will say this: I don't know much about this. Florida Complex League. I don't know what's going on. If well, they, I mean, it's I like don't know anything. Ball. It's like below a ball. I understand yeah. that, but I don't know if they made some sort of a tweaks. To, <laughs> or I am. That's crazy. How is that happening? I don't know. I don't know. Come on, it's Alex. A disaster. Come Get on, Alex. Up, we buddy. need we need you up in the lineup. But Rough. he's not. His ERA okay. is nine. Real quick, I wanted to bring this up because, uh, you know, we have uh, an ambassador at Bet99. His name is George St. Pierre. He reached out to one Elon Musk saying he'd like Ooh. to be his training partner for the big fight that probably, well, you know, I would say okay, probably so won't happen. On. I think it might happen because it's for charity, but against Mark Zuckerberg. And then he had John <laughs> Bones Jones say, I want to train you, Mark Zuckerberg. Could you have GSP and John Jones in the corner of these two guys for the UFC? That would be pretty cool. First of all, I, see, I saw this, did not even look into it because I'm like, this is Fugazi. I'm not even going to even yeah. read anything on it. Yeah. But this is a thing that actually might happen. Like, for real, for real? Like this I mean, fight? Dana White yeah. says he's interested in it. Of course he is. He's going to make a billion dollars off of one fight. Well, they say care. it's for charity, which yeah. most Dana of them White would be. Dana White could take two rabbits in the park and make it into a pay-per-view and make some <laughs> yeah. go out of it. Let's be Are honest. they fighting? Uh, you know, possibly, <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. over a carrot. Uh, <laughs> what was I going to say? Zuckerberg is a legit uh, jujitsu guy. But apparently Elon's yeah. done a little bit of that, too. But yes, I, the, 
they're the odds on bet ninety nine uh, dot com right now. Really? Okay. And uh, you can you can you can get the odds, and he is a big favorite. I think he's minus two hundred or minus. Oh, that's pretty yeah. solid. Yeah. Did you hear that? His Elon's mom tried to put a stop to it. Why? Like, on Twitter, she's like, my my son is not gonna fight. Like, <laughs> she's like, what are we doing? Just put pull yourself in front of a chair and, sh- and fight with your words. You don't fight in a cage. Hey, listen, Albert. We were down in Montreal at H two O. We saw Richard Ho and GSP working. You get Elon in there. He's got a shot. No, he's got a shot, man. I don't know. All right. <laughs> Should be a lot of fun. Thanks very much, Sean, for joining us. Yeah. Albert Vartanian. Yeah, this yeah, has buddy, been Bet 99's The Parlay Show. We'll be back Thursday. Enjoy the games tonight. Bye.